How's it going, folks? Welcome back to World of Warcraft on the Orc Shaman. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, Orhan Ogreblade, the Gorduni threat. Go forth to victory. Within the high wilderness to the south lay countless ancient ruins. It's there that the ancestors of the Night Elves fold about with arcane magic, and it's there that the Gordoni ogres wander, searching for leftover scraps. You'll notice the forest is completely destroyed in that area. The ogres leave only useless muck in their wake, depriving the horde of valuable resources. Go and slay the Gordoni there, Razok. Secure the area for the horde, and only for the horde. String. The Gordoni orb. While you're down there cracking skulls, I've got reports that make me think these ogres may be more than uh, the usual lumbering threat. The warlocks among them have been seen carrying orbs, possibly items of empowerment. It would be easy to dismiss them as crude trinkets, but I need to make sure we're not surprised. Bring me back one of these orbs. My Ogre in the field? Oh, this is a dungeon quest. The most dire and most organized threat to us in Feralis are the Gordok Ogres in the northern wing of Dire Maul. If we eradicate them and take Dire Maul for the Horde, we will possess a heavily fortified seat of power in this region and numerous artifacts to sweeten the deal. I sent in a small army of Stone Maul Ogres inside earlier. If any of have any of them have survived, speak with them. And finish the job. Go with honor. Look at honor. Right. Well, May your we'll see about that last one. What other quests we got? How you doing, man? Apprentice Hexa, testing the vessel. Master Uzeris taught me in the ways of making spirit weapons of great power. I'll help you set on the path to make some, and you'll give me the chance to practice my craft. This vessel can shrink and trap a defeated creature inside of it. We'll need the music, 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 of beasts first. I am for bears and long tooth wolves. Kill them and use the music vessel to shrink and capture them before their spirits can escape. You be careful, man. Jangdor. Hail. The mark of quality. Be careful. I take pride in my leatherwork, and I feel it shows. Quality should never be compromised. Anyone who says that quality doesn't matter would also have you believe that the Earth does not keep secrets. In my latest pursuit of high-quality materials, I've discovered thick Yeti hides. Yetis are native to Feralis, often found north of here, in Rage Scar Hold. I'll give you a choice of one of my leather goods for a stack of ten. If that is agreeable to you, then we are set. Walk with the Earth Mother. Alright, so some of... Okay, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go back down there, and over there. Let's go get these Yeti hides. Oh, also, by the way, folks, the patch has come down, so I can sky ride. And somehow still hang on to their wyvern. I have the orc, the grip of an orc. So it's good that I can now use some of the older mounts that I got, and actually one of my favorite mounts. I'll be able to go sky riding, so we should be able to move around a lot quicker. I still want to try to ride on the ground when I go into new areas, but to return back to, you know, handing quests and so on to be a lot quicker. Uh, also, my spec was reset to a point. Uh, so I just went with the, I went with the starter build, and I know I'm missing my Earth Elemental, but I couldn't find my Wind Fury Totem. It might be there somewhere, but instead I noticed that I've got this, Sky Fury. Harness the fury of the Windlord to grant a target ally 2% mastery and empower their auto attacks to have 20% chance to instantly strike. So, I'll be using that. And I don't have to worry about keeping, uh, remembering to pop down totems, right? So I can pop that. 
I've also got Earth Shield from this side. And my Lightning Shield, my Wind Fury weapon, and my Flame Tongue weapon. So we've got a fair few buffs going. Alright, let's get these Rage Scar Yetis. I think apart from that, for the most part... <clears throat> it's not too wild a change. <clears throat> Level 50... Ooh! We're in the danger zone now, folks. Level 57. <laughs> We gotta get back at level 58. Elemental spirits, your feral spirits are now imbued with fire, frost, and lightning. I like that. Go, go, go. Get him. <clears throat> yeah, one thing that did happen, I noticed this on my human paladin, is it's now just, for some reason, even though I haven't done on this character, it's just filled out my story progress, which is a little bit difficult. Like, I know that I haven't finished this uh, zone on this character, but it was nice to be able to look at that and see the story progress for each unique character So I'm still hoping that that's just a bug and it'll be fixed. But yeah, when I saw it on my human palette, I was like, what? What are you doing? Why would you do that? Because you may have noticed when I had one of the quests open It does say like that I had completed it on, you know, somebody in the warband so I know that in the past I have done this if I'm looking to complete achievements or something. So that's fine. But yeah. On the quest log, should definitely not have this. I can't stress how bad that is. Simple fix, I would think. I would hope. And uh, hopefully it's something that gets changed sooner rather than later. Later, I don't want to see it happen like right at the end of the expansion or something. I'm, I'm also just thinking for my own War Within series. If I go ahead and, you know, I want to quickly run through it on an alternative character, I'll be ahead of my series. So when I actually get there uh, to a certain a new zone on that on my War Within character, my series character, it'll all be completed. Which I think will look a little ridiculous. So again, I, I feel like it must just be a bug. I know there was a few bugs with this whole war, um, this previous patch, which is understandable. I mean, they have done a few, there's some really good things too. Like for example, from the, from the main character screen, I can just select my character and it goes straight in. Whereas previously I had characters across all different realms. I, and sometimes I'd sit there go, I don't know where my character is. Is he on this realm? Is that some clicking into realms trying to find the character? And uh, yeah, now I can just do it all from the main screen. I think that's a welcome change. Oh, also now... Now, and I don't have it, but now I can actually join guilds cross realm. So if I look up my guild, uh, which was Echoes, in Eter Echoes of Eternity, uh, I don't know if it's going to show up actually. Echoes of Eternity. Oh, there's a fair few of them out there now. Oh, that's it. So Echoes in Eternity. Um, I think that's my... Horde Guild, because I've got two. I've got Echoes in Eternity and Echoes of Eternity. Uh, it doesn't show the realm. But anyway, the point is I can actually just join it. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, which I probably will do.
That way I'll have like, well, I mean, I guess you get a few little perks and so on. But yeah, you could just have more in one guild. Now, the only thing I'm not sure of is what would happen um, with dungeoning. Because I'm an Australian realm and I'm playing through with US people. I guess it's it's not that bad. It's just I notice when you play with US people, you see people in the party chat once in a while go, "Oh my goodness, what's with this lag? <laughs> what's going on?" I guess they're experiencing 100 milliseconds as you know lag or 150 or whatever. But yeah, either way, I can get them into the guild, and then they can have. Uh, yeah, take, take use of some of the perks. I can see the guild members in there. Because I primarily play on my Australian characters for the latency. But I definitely have a contingent of US realm characters. So yes, that's what's been happening over the last couple days. Uh, I know there's going to be a... There should be a new War Within episode... ...this week sometime, because... ...there should be a new quest for me to do. So probably by the time you see this... ...I would have already recorded it. Ten out of ten. All right. This is the good thing about sky riding is now I can just fly back, and we're there in a snap. You know, like a, a thousand yards is nothing now. Ah, I have just the thing for you. Were you able to get a stack of ten thick yeti hides? My leather goods are second to none. I'll share a sampling with you, should you have the hides. So in peace. The mark of quality. Ah, oh, excellent. These hides, when given a special treatment, are as resilient as I and I tell you. It would take many tries in order to get the right mix down for the tanning, but I am confident they will bring my mark of quality to the next level. As for you, Razok, your assistance has proven invaluable to me. Please, take your choice from these items that I have crafted. Agility, agility. No... No other stats on them, interesting. But a lot more armor, and a lot of agility. Huh. I would say... The, the one with agility and stamina, I guess, and more armor. That's for feet, that's for hands. So we got 146. Yeah, I'll replace the 146 then. May the eternal sun shine upon me. It's a bit of a step we up, isn't it? Meet again. Now, again, I gotta pay attention because I will be having to return to Orgrimma very we soon. And that journey is not gonna take quite as long as I thought it would have in the past, you know? May the eternal sun shine upon thee. Improved quality. I'm a bit confused. The Rage Scar Yeti used to be the finest source of leather in these lands, but these pelts are weak and even rotted in spots. Some sort of illness must be plaguing the creatures. I have to rely on a different source. The Yeti of Feral Scar Vale to the south have hides nearly as strong. They are also a great deal fiercer. Do not hunt them without caution, shaman. Be careful. Alright, well, this is kind of going my way. I won't do that just yet. We'll get the beasts sorted out over here. Shrink and capture a fallen beast. Here we go. Fits right in my pocket. Ooh. 
Get in my pocket, you. What about you, long tooth runner? You want to get into my pocket, too? Better believe you do. So I've got the Stone Bulwark Totem uh, with 3,000 health, granting the caster a shield absorbing 30,000 damage. So I've got a lot of shields going on. <laughs> I got this guy, I got that guy. So this one's got nine charges. And this one just lasts for the whole hour. So this one I have to replenish more often. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Give me a 10. Some new icons there. I guess that suggests that's a repeatable. Now, the reason I'm stressed about level 58 is I want to stop gaining experience after at that point. Uh, to do that, because I can then stay in the old worlds and continue leveling, at least as far as I, you know, from the previous expansion, um, sorry, previous patches. So I don't want to risk being in these areas, but being at a really, like a, being overpowered essentially, so I'm just one-shotting everything. once you get the level there's no going back it would be kind of nice in a way to be able to say oh you know what even though i am level 58 level 63 75 set my level as if i'm this level and you know all your gear whatever you have equipped at the time sort of scales back i guess if you got the if you got high gear it would just scale to whatever the maximum level item level is at that level and if you got whatever lower, then that's what you get. It would be nice because I think, look, you know, a lot of people just want to blast through the content and get to max level, but I think there's a contingent. I think there's a, I think there's people out there that do enjoy questing and would like to, you know, uh, see it sort of at the level. So there is still a little challenge. You know, it may not be the greatest challenge, but they feel accomplished when they do a quest. So if you were able to do that just by, say, just punching in a number. I don't know if there would be any ramifications, negative ramifications. You know, you might be able to go, oh, hey, hey, Guild, we've we've cleared all the raids for this week. Uh, how about we go and do a bit of Ordua? You know, at level, whatever level. You know, because they might go whatever the max level was at the time, or maybe just go, uh, you know, below to make it even more challenging, just for the hell of it, you know? Kind of opens that up. Relax. Did you get the beast? Music? Mo Moisek? I don't know what the hell that is, but anyway. Apparently it shrinks and captures fallen beasts. 
Beast Mule Muse. You said. Good to meet you. As my master told me, upon the violent death, the music of the creature may escape and seek revenge. Shrinking the creatures, as you did, Razok, prevents the music from escaping. Now, we may use it as we please. Be good. Here's that. The next step is hippogriffs. As Master Uzeri O has said, hippogriffs have been loyal companions to the night elves for many years, and their spirits are loyal and steadfast. I don't think they'll miss a few, and I don't care if they do. We need the music of ten fray feather hippogriffs in the wilderness to the south. Bye bye now. Bye bye. While I'm here, let me just go in and bind, because we will have to make use of this soon. Alright, so the hippogriff's over there, a little bit further away. There's the feral scar yetis. And then just in there somewhere, there's zero zero X. Oh, he's right there. Talk to that guy in a second. I'm sure there's more yetis on the way out of this. The perfect yeti hide? You have found what may very well be a perfect yeti hide. You easily note that it is exceptionally thick and sturdy, more so than even the ones you've seen from the yeti in the rage scar. Considering that, Changdor, Swift Strider at Stone Mall hold is in the market for Yeti Hides. This particular one may be of considerable interest to him. You appear to have uncovered the wreckage of a robotic chicken. The voice from within the egg crackles to life again. Yes, excellent work. This is indeed my homing robot, though my senses indicate that it needs a jump start before it can fly back to Booty Bay for repairs. Go ahead and place the beacon inside the rover. The beacon will take care of the rest. Um, now. I need to fly from here to there. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sky ride all the way. I'm just wondering if I'm going to cross over too many areas. I guess if I fly this way. I might only end up discovering one particular area. Alright, let's not do the 00x quest. I think between this quest that I'm doing and hand again, I should get there. And then we'll just fly over. And then I'll just come back here and we'll do the escort quest. Unless... Actually, no, we should be alright. We should be... I have to kill those guys anyway, so... <coughs> 7,700. Should be okay. You place the egg distress beacon inside the chicken homing robot. Hums and whirs are heard from inside the robot as it struggles to stand up. After the robot comes to life, Oglethorpe's voice is heard once more. But now from inside the robot, 000x22 FE is working at least, but it needs more major repairs. It is much too heavy for you to carry it, but I think I have an idea. Are you up for watching over it some more? 
The gnome's voice crackles once again from the robot. I need to move 00x22 EFE in the open, in an open safe place so it can begin a lengthy takeoff procedure. It has built-in cloaking, but I need time on my end to make it operational again. Escort the robot from its current location to, let's say, the main road. That should be a perfect place and long enough to get things online. Escort it safely and then come talk to me in Booty Bay. Oglethorpe Omnotius out. <laughs> Emergency power activated. Initializing ambulatory motorized something or other. <laughs> I get these things defeated before it comes around, otherwise it's gonna fight it and then go back. Nope. Oh, let's move it. with purpose. Let's go, buddy. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> Just blended into the into the grass there. See those floating rocks. Got a rock and a lightning ball. An electrical lightning electricity. Ball of electricity flown around me. Alright, we're a little shy on Feral Sky Yet it Oh, here maybe, maybe. <coughs> Don't you hit my chicken. Eight. A few sparks coming out of that chicken. Oh, there we go. Flight systems online. Cluck. Engaging rockets for transport to Booty Bay. There it goes. All right, cool. We're still not level 58 yet, so that is good. And fight a few more of these guys. I mean, at the very least, I can get the quest done. And then I can hand it in even if I hit level 58. Grizzle gut. Grizzle gut might take me over. You've got a feral? You've got a feral scar yeti hide for me? Nope, you do. Correct. Alright, so... Oh, did I collect the appearance? I did collect the appearance. Oh, finally! Finally! So now you can collect the appearances no matter what class you're playing. Uh, well... Well, what about if it's plate? You can't equip it. So how does that work? Or can I equip it? But it's not like the 
you can't use it properly. Or maybe I just sell the items at the vendor and then it'll automatically go to my appearances. Maybe. Ah, oh, I've been expecting you. So what have I got? This for example. Oh, did I, I think I did. Did I collect it? I did. Oh, good. So I can just sell this stuff. That's great. And then you can also see it says Warbound until equipped. So I can pass it around to different characters in my Warband. Um, which I imagine means any character. Essentially. Because I think on the main menu, on your character screen when you load in, you can choose four characters. But from what I've heard is that they're your favorites. So you're putting them right up the top of the list. So you can click on them from the actual screen. Like they're sitting around a campfire, essentially. Four of them. But the warband is all your characters. I thought the warband was, we're selecting four of our characters. And you know, they might be like NPCs in dungeons or something like that. Something to that effect. But uh, it doesn't seem to play or be that way. But that's cool. So I can just straight up sell it. I don't have to equip these things anymore. And just go, yeah, make that sale. And then it's just, uh, yeah, it's all done. Fantastic. Go, in go and take me into level 58 territory, please. Meet again. Are the Feral Scar Yeti still there? Did you get the leather? I did. Wind. Oh, excellent, excellent. These are going to work out incredibly well. I could already tell that they're going to be much harder when properly cured. Thanks again for your aid, Rosok. Here, please take one of my latest creations. Alright, so now we're level 58. At this point, we're going to make the great journey. Oh, he sent me some mail. Sent me something in the mail. Uh, totemic recall. What have I got here? Oh, lightning lasso, of course. I gotta have my lightning lasso. That, I like that. Yeah, alright, got you. Alright, so we'll come back and we'll hand in that quest after. For now, we're on. We're flying. 